Hi everyone, we can go ahead and start. So just one quick tip for you, if you want coffee, then they have coffee in the, the design center. Uh, the, the, we'll just come from there, so we'll pretty well, pretty well caffeinated. Uh, all right, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Tano. I'm with the IBM Silicon Valley Lab in uh, San Jose, California. Uh, here we have here my colleague, uh, Hongbing Liu from Huawei, uh, Julio Rano from the uh, um, uh, IBM Software Development uh, Group, and uh, Kim Ming Chang from the uh, IBM Research Center in Beijing. Right. Uh, Jay Lau is also with us. Uh, he is with the China Development Lab, but he couldn't join us at the summit today. Right. We also are lucky to have a group of uh, uh, university interns, and they have done a lot of work um, in the pro prototyping the, some of the initial, initial POC, and we'll show a demo of their work at the end of the uh, talk today. All right? Okay, so uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, scaling, and uh, uh, scaling for VM, I think, is a pretty well, uh, uh, it's not a new, a new subject, so there's been a lot of work in OpenStack on scaling VM already. But when you add a container to the context, then basically you have a new dimension. And uh, this is uh, uh, what we will explore today. And uh, I use explore because this is uh, new work and you know, it's still very much work in process, in, 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 in progress. Right? So I, I will start by describing a couple of use case where we tie together the scaling at the container level and the uh, uh, VM level. Then I'll pass on to Hong Bing. He will talk about the current support in Magnum right now for auto scaling and what we are thinking about doing next. And then Julio is going to talk about Selin. This is a new uh, project uh, that would uh, basically provide clustering as a service. So auto scaling is a part of that. Right. And then Kim is going to close up by describing how you know, uh, we, we think we can tie everything together and we'll, he'll show a demo of uh, the initial uh, POC that we put together for, for this uh, summit. All right. Okay, so let's first look at the use case. Right? Um, we know that uh, uh, Magnum um, Container as a Service in uh, uh, in OpenStack uh, will build for you a cluster, uh, and uh, on that cluster, typically you would not run one application, so it's a shared cluster. Uh, so when we scale that cluster, basically we we'll look at uh, some kind of policy to trigger the scaling. And utilization is one you know, easy way to do that. We can look at the CPU utilization or memory utilization to drive the scaling. And you scale by adding node or tech taking node away from the cluster. So that, that's what we do at the cluster level. And when we share the cluster, we would run multiple apps on the cluster. Uh, so we're gonna assume, assume that uh, there is some way to uh, trigger the auto scaling on the cluster le on the app level. Right? So, so this will be something like uh, watching the latency uh, for the requests that come into the container, or uh, we could watch the uh, uh, request queue. So many ways to do this, but there'll be apps uh, sp uh, centric, specific to the app, and we'll scale by by just adding or removing container to the uh, for the app. Right? Some example of this kind of uh, app are the the typical three tier or two tier web app where you have a, a container that handle requests coming into uh, to, to the web app. So when you have this, then uh, you would have some kind of a service level agreement uh, that would dictate you know, how the app performs. So it could be something in the form of a, uh, that the latency cannot be longer than a certain level, or it could be that the, the queue cannot be longer than you know, something. Right? And that would, would, would de determine the kind of uh, or scaling that we need to, to implement at the uh, App level, right? So let's uh, uh, the next couple chart. I'm going to show a couple scenario uh, to see what what could happen. Right? Uh, so, so I'm going to show on the top the uh, um, scaling that happened at the container level. So container here, I'm going to be uh, generic, meaning it could be you know c container if you have a swarm cluster, or it could be a pod if you have a Kubernetes cluster. So we will be pretty generic in this term here. Uh, at the bottom, I'll show the scaling that happened at the cluster level. So this is where we're adding a uh, host to your cluster. Right? So to start out, uh, we just have a single app, a very simple uh, scenario, a single app on a, a cluster, a, this blue container. And uh, we're going to let it up to scale out uh, based on the, the load on the app. Okay? Uh, so the way the uh, cluster scale is, is simple, we just uh, watch the utilization on the, cluster, on the host uh, as a node get fully utilized, and we just add another node to host more, more, uh, more containers. So very straightforward. Then, 
the coordination between the two levels is basically that utilization. Okay. So let's look at the second scenario when we have a more app running on the cursor. So we have now a blue app and a and a, uh, a red app. Okay. First, we'll assume that we have infinite resource on your cluster. So now we can allow the app to scale out as much as you want. And, and with that, well, there's no problem. Uh, um, we, and, and again, the coordination between the two levels is just the utilization. But uh, the cluster is not unlimited. Right? So the, the, we always have limit on the resource. So we can always uh, only scale out the app to a certain level. So what happens when you have limited? Okay. Uh, let's let's see what happened. So let's suppose the blue uh, container scale out, and because it is a heavy load, it's going to scale out and utilize most of the resource in your cluster. Then the red con container would s attempt to scale out because the load increased, and we find that uh, it could not scale out because there's no more resource. Right? Uh, well, so you say, uh, is this okay? Well, it could be okay if that's that's what you expect your app to uh, to behave in. But what if your red app is the critical app and the blue one is the lower priority app? Then what you have now is uh, basically an inverted priority where your critical app uh, uh, could not use the resource in your cluster, whereas your lower priority app is you know, hogging up the resource. So what do you do? All right. Well, okay. So I can say well, I'm going to put a limit on the blue container, so it's not going to hog up the resource. So that's one quick way to, to do this. We mess up the max on the, on the blue container. All right, so that worked. And uh, let's see what happened. So blue scale out and hit the limit, so it stopped there. And then what, what happened if red doesn't scale? There's no load on the red. So now what happened now is that you have a resource available on your cluster that is not being uh, accessible by the blue container. And uh, that's not good either. Right? So that brings us to the what we really want to have, and then we, we that uh, we want to be able to uh, uh, allow the uh, the app to scale out as much as they want, but have some kind of priority so that we can allocate the resource uh, according to what they need. So, so with this, what we will do is that we now have a priority on the on the uh, blue and the red container, right? So let's see what happened. We let the blue scale out because the the load of blue arrive first. And then when the load on red arrive later, we uh, tell blue to scale back and free up the resource so that the uh, red can now you know, scale out and, 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 uh, and uh, meet the, the, uh, the load on red. So what just happened is that we now add a uh, linkage from the bottom to the top, top layer. Basically, we, we at the cluster level, uh, because we hit the limit on the cluster resource, we're now going back to the cluster and tell, going back to the container and tell it to scale back. You know, to adjust the, the resource uses. And with that, we now we have two-way linkage. From the uh, top to the bottom, we use utilization to, to provide the, uh, the information. And from bottom to top, we use the priority to, to, uh, uh, to, to adjust the, 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 the scaling. And with that, now we have a complete loop, and uh, we can you know, manage the two level of scaling in a, in a smart way. So uh, with that kind of uh, scenario uh, to, to help motivate the solution, uh, let me now pass on to my colleague Hong Bing. He will talk about the uh, how Mag Magnum is handling uh, scaling right now. Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Hong Bing. I'm the core reviewer of the Magnum project. So, uh, I'm going to talk about how the Magnum is enable the auto scaling uh, in the in the clusters. And so, this is the overview of the Magnum. So, Magnum is to uh, it's an open stack uh, container service project, and it's basically in, it enable users to run the containers on top of open stack infrastructures, and it can do several things. It can do the provisioning, and it can provision the uh, Kubernetes clusters. It can provision the Docker Swarm and the Mesos, and it can scale. And but the main is can add and remove Nova instance to the clusters at the run times. And it can manage a set of the container-related resource. Uh, for example, in Kubernetes, there's a pod and service and replication controllers. And in Docker Swarm, there's a container resource. And so this is the overview architecture of the Maglums. So in the right size, there's a Maglum client. That's a CLI to talk to the Maglum service. 
And in the Matlab service, there's uh, two process. The first one is the Matlab API, which is the process to process the RESTful request. And this API expose a set of the uh, REST resource. Uh, the most important resource is the abstraction is the Bay. So Bay is basically a represent a Kubernetes clusters or Docker Swarm or Mesos clusters. And there's a node that is represent a Nova instance. And there's a pod, there's a service, there's a replication controller that is from the Kubernetes. And there's a Bay model that is basically is a store configuration of the Bay. And the second process is the called the Matlab conductors. And this is the process to do the real job. It, it Basically, you can use a heat template and to deploy the Kubernetes clusters or Docker Swarm or Mesos. And then after the cluster is provisioning, it talks to the API of the Kubernetes to manage the container resource. And yeah, so this is the architecture of the Maglums. And then I'm going to talk about how Maglum is going to enable the auto scaling. And this is the blueprint and it's close to finish. And so it do the auto scaling by several steps. The first step is to run a task that is running in the background to periodically pull the, pull the matrix from the Kubernetes API. And then the Matlab will analyze the data and send the matrix to serometers. And if the certain matrix that is beyond the threshold of the specified by the users, and the serometer will trigger a alarm and then the heat will do the scale of the bait. And this is how the Matlab to enable the auto scaling. It is scaling in the bait levels. So on the other hand, there's a proposal for the Kubernetes, and that is to handle how to enable the auto scaling in the pod. And so it do by several steps. The, the first, the Kubernetes introduced a new resource that's called the horizontal uh, pod auto scalers. And this, this new resource is going to one-to-one -to -one map to a replication controllers. And this component will uh, retrieve the matrix from a pod and then to analyze it and use a built-in algorithm to trigger the scaling. And if it is triggered, and the replication controller will resize the pod. And this is how the Kubernetes is doing the auto scalings. And so we can see that the Maglum is adjust the auto scaling in the bay levels. And Kubernetes adjust the auto scaling in the pod levels. And so what we are going to propose is that is under discussion is how to combine the mechanism of the auto scaling of the bay and auto scaling of the pod and to achieve a solution that is that's more complete. And so this is what we are going to propose uh, is the new component that is to the Maglums. That's called the Maglum Auto Scalers. And this component is going to scale the bait and the application, to manage the bait and the applications by manage the pod that's running on the applications. And so first it's going to check a list of the replication controller that's in the bait and figure out if this base is a user has created an auto scaler of, uh, that is associated with this replication controller. If there's a not, this replication controller is going to manage by Maglums. And then Maglum will do the scaling that is, that is on the bay and the pod. And then uh, it can be customized so the user can specify the data source, it can specify the matrix and the threshold, and it can specify the number of nodes that is standby node, and this node can join to the clusters right away when, when the cluster is need to scale. And so this is the this is the two level scaling. Uh, this graph shows the two level scaling. So on the so this is the standard Kubernetes setup and there's a set of nodes that's running the pod and there's a dedicated node that's one of the hipsters. And this hipster is going to get the matrix from, the, from, the, from each node. And then it will store the matrix on the storage backend. And on the right side, there's a Maglum auto scaler service. 
and it has uh, collectors as to collect the matrix from the storage. It has uh, analyzers to analyze the data, and it will trigger the scaling, and operator will do the scaling. And operator will talk to the Kubernetes masters to scale the bay, sorry, scale the pot, and it will do talk to the Malum conductor to scale the bay. And Sunning is going to handle the auto scaling. So uh, I'm going to pass to Julio to talk about the Sunning project. And Thank you, Hongbing. Uh, so I'm going to talk about Senlin and how this kind of fits into uh, what we're talking about here. Um, so Senlin was born out of heat, the heat auto scaling support um, as a general clustering service for um, cloud, homogenous cloud resources. And by treating um, the homogenous cloud resources as a cluster, um, we can start to talk about the manageability of the resources um, in terms of um, additional use cases beyond just auto scaling. Um, we can talk about clusters being distinctly able to be scalable, uh, load balanced, highly available, and ultimately more manageable. Oh. I didn't expect, okay. So uh, the Sentinel architecture looks very similar to uh, what you find in other OpenStack core services. We purposely kind of followed best practices and patterns that you already uh, have existing for other services. So uh, we have a client component that users can use CLI, to, that users can use command line to issue REST requests to the Sentinel service API. Uh, the Sentinel service API can take the inbound requests and map those via RPC to the engine. And an important point to part out here is, um, you know, all the RPC message handling and processing utilizes, you know, all the common libraries that OpenStack provides out of the box. So we, we reuse um, most of the Oslo modules for doing all our message handling and message processing. Um, the Sentinel engine, two um, primary constructs within the engine that are important here that really distinguish um, Sentinel in terms of a general um, cluster management service, and that's profiles and policies. Um, profiles are uh, a, a specification for um, the operations and the characteristics of the cluster resources. Um, and then pro policies are the set of rules that can be enforced or checked based on actions that are triggered. Um, and we'll see uh, an example of this in a demo that we go through uh, later on in the presentation. And then lastly here, the Sendland database uh, is a persistent store to store information relative to um, specific policies and profiles for um, a cluster instance. So that's kind of how everything fits together. Um, okay, so um, on the left here, there's another view of uh, the Senlin constructs and abstractions and kind of how they fit together. Um, on the left-hand side, we've got policies. And again, like I said, policies are um, an organization or a set of rules that govern enforcement, enforce and um, you can do checking based on actions that are triggered. Uh, so for example, a, a placement policy allows you to um, place uh, resources within suitable locations. So for example, you can talk about um, placement policy for availability zones, regions, specific data centers, et cetera. Um, in terms of scaling, scaling is a common use case and we'll talk about that within the demo. But um, again, a set of rules that allow you to work with resources that are elastic, right? So um, provide the ability to provide rules that are enforced and checked for scaling in or scaling out um, you know, elastic resources and resources that change. Um, and then we've got other policies that we can provide uh, to support other management use cases like deletion or health, load balancing or batching. Um, so policies work in conjunction with profiles, which you see in the middle. And as I said, profiles are uh, a, a description or a specification, if you will, of um, the cluster resources, the resources that the cluster, that are part of the cluster. Um, and these are homogenous. I think that's the important point, piece to point out. Um, so, so for example, um, a po profile will talk about um, uh, characteristics and operations that are unique to that um, 
cluster, uh, to the resources that are a part of that cluster. So you can have operations for deletion, for update, um, for joining a cluster that, again, are specific to that profile type and to that type of resources. Uh, so profiles, policies work together to manage clusters of objects, so clusters of homogeneous objects. So in this case, cluster, uh, clusters of heat stacks or clusters of Nova VMs, a, a cluster of containers, et cetera. Um, okay, so this is uh, uh, an example of how this kind of ties together. Um, again, profiles uh, describe the characteristics and the operations that you can um, enforce on the members of the um, cluster. So for this example, we've got a Nova server type and the various def different characteristics of that um, cluster resource. Um, and then we've got policies here. These are examples of scale-in and scale-out policies based on a change in capacity that are associated with the cluster. And then finally, a webhook is kind of what enables um, the policy and uh, profiles to work on this cluster. In this example, we've got a resize action. So a webhook takes as input a uh, few different pieces of information. One is the object that um, you're targeting, the target object, in this case a cluster. Um, an action, in this case the, the webhook is a resize, and credentials. So the webhook provides just basically a URL input and asks for that information. Um, you can think of it as like an HTTP callback. So in this case, um, as long as you encode the information for this particular webhook, you can um, initiate the resize action and it'll work based on the policies that are associated against this cluster. And we'll see again an example of how this comes together. Um, so for, for policies, the, this is an example of what we're using in the demo, simple policy. But um, the key point here is that since we're separating these into their own distinct um, constructs, we can specify them as being declarative. So in this sense, um, we're using YAML markup to describe uh, the policy. Um, and, and furthermore, what we can do is, um, for Mataka, we're exploring the use of mapping existing cloud standards, uh, such as Tosca policies, to enable um, you know, the YAML markup that you have here, so we have a standardized way of describing policies. And then finally, the trigger is kind of what uh, initiates the action. So the key point here on the trigger is, um, Sendlin provides a generic abstraction for a trigger. And what you see here is an example of a cilometer threshold alarm. So um, users can provide specific in implementations of a trigger to work off of their existing cloud monitoring um, service. In this example, it's cilometer, but um, you could provide uh, implementation for Manaska or Surveil or KiloEyes or other uh, cloud uh, monitoring resources. Uh, so with that, um, that's a little description about Senlin. I'll hand it over to my colleague, Hugh Ming Tang, out of China Research Lab, to talk about um, the demonstration on how this all comes together and kind of how this works. Hugh Ming? Okay, thank you, for the, uh, That was a nice presentation of Senlin. I wish one day I can do that well. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, uh, let's get back to this uh, uh, the, uh, topic, how we did uh, two layers of the scaling uh, and put things together to make it work. So uh, before doing that, um, let's take a look how auto scaling is being done today on OpenStack. Uh, if you have uh, experience, uh, you, this chart is very, very easy to read. So basically you will have a template. Uh, you can, it, then heat will translate that, that template into something real, some real object backed by other services such as Nova server or Cine volume or whatever. Then uh, for auto scaling, you need an auto scaling group resource and you need cilometer alarm resource. You will need a scaling up, scaling down resource. And this whole thing works together to make auto scaling a user scenario that can be supported. Um, the, there are some limits. There are, you know, no, I'm from HIT team. I'm, I, I won't say HIT uh, is bad, but HIT is not designed to be an auto scaling engine. HIT is uh, an orchestration engine. That is the 
the mission of the project. Auto skin can be supported by heat, but we also see a lot of um, requirements, uh, say deletion policies, placement policies, a lot of hooks. So based on that um, perception, uh, the team has uh, decided, okay, auto scaling should be offloaded into something, something standalone that focuses on auto scaling. And uh, if you have auto scaling uh, requirements, that is the new project you should go to, not HEAT. HEAT will do orchestration only and do that thing well. Um, if you complain about auto scaling, find the same guys, sue them. <laughs> so um, uh, one of the problems we have uh, today with uh, HEAT-based auto scaling is uh, we have only one verb, that is a uh, stack update. Stack update basically uh, contains everything you want to change. Uh, if you want to change the image ID, for example, that is a stack update. If you want to resize your resource group, uh, that is another uh, update. So that is um, not so flexible, so uh, that's something we want to change. The other thing is um, when you use heat-based auto scaling, you have uh, basically an outer uh, stack created. Inside that stack, you have uh, a dedicated inner stack created for the auto scaling resource group. If you are using template resource, those template resource themselves will create yet another layer of stacks. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing is getting very complicated. Is um, is his team is still struggling on this? How to make things work more stable? So if you are using Sending, uh, we provide more knobs, more APIs, more options for you to control because it's more focused on managing a group of homogeneous objects. So uh, in Sending Engine, we have basic uh, two important abstractions, cluster and node. And for node, we don't know what it really is. It could be a heat stack, it could be a Nova server. But that doesn't matter. It's, it's uh, complete handled by profile. That, that, that's the, the mode you, want, you will use for creating a specific node. And Sandy really focused on how to manage the cluster well. Um, in this uh, uh, session, we are showing um, auto scaling scenario. Uh, we make, make it work like this. We have a cluster, we attach uh, scaling up, scaling down policy to that cluster, and we trigger scale in and scale out actions on that cluster. When scale in, scale out actions are executed, actually, or more accur accurately, before those actions are executed, the scale out, scale in policies will be checked. So. Um, this is how, how things work, and uh, Julio has just helped present um, a generic uh, solution for sending to talk to other monitoring services. The first prototype, prototype we worked on is uh, Synometer Alarm, but we have plan to support Monastic Alarm, uh, Jakra Q, or your, your, your other uh, data center monitoring systems. Uh, we don't think that will be a, a disruptive change to, to the city engine itself. So, um, okay, let's see something real. Um, where is the video? <laughs> okay, I need, it, need this one. Okay. okay. Oh. <laughs> Too fast, right? Scaling is getting really fast. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, what? Yeah. yeah. That's. Okay. Okay. I, I, can, I can use the uh, space bar. Okay. Um, okay. Um, the first thing you you will you will do um, because uh, 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 we 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 did this POC um, in the context of Magnum. So the first thing you will do is uh, create a Bay model and use that Bay model to create um, 
uh, bay. Then you can see from uh, sending command line, okay, these are the nodes created uh, from Magnum. They, uh, this, uh, these nodes uh, are from one cluster, and that cluster will contain the mini nodes and the much node uh, for Kubernetes. Okay, so we can see uh, there is still one node being created. Next, when we do a uh, bay list, okay, the bay uh, has been created. You can see the uh, details of, about the bay. Um, we, we will saw two IP addresses there. And from sending side, okay, we can see, okay, here the cluster is created and it contains three nodes. Now, um, let's see uh, policies here. Uh, Actually, we created for this demo two policies, and uh, we are showing one of the policy uh, detail uh, also on this screen. Uh, two policies, one for scaling out, uh, one for scaling in. Uh, the details we are showing is for the scaling out policy, is ISO, you can see there. Um, okay, let's continue. Then we have a. It's a can we get get to the bed? This clutter attachment. To then play. Okay. Um, then. Uh, here for this demo, yeah, we, we have a uh, web hook list. We create a web hook to trigger the uh, scaling out action, and we create synometer alarms uh, that says, okay, if memory utilization from containers is above seventy percent, please uh, create a new mini node. That's the rule. Um, okay, we can see some details. Uh, uh, here we have two uh, screen here. The left hand side we are uh, we will create some workload. Actually, it's a Spark work workload, um, a kind of a toy um, uh, application. The right hand side we are seeing uh, output from the uh, Magnum conductor. Let's see how things work. Um, uh, we log into one of the mini nodes, and the uh, memory utilization is about 36 or also. Uh, we do some basic setups to uh, make Spark work. Um, actually, these steps can be automated. You can imagine that. Um, but for this demo, we didn't go, uh, go that far. Uh, it's a simple uh, benchmark that will consume a lot of memory. We will drive the memory utilization above that threshold and see if a um, new mini node will be created automatically. So uh, now the uh, memory utilization is about um, 60. Okay. This is the workload. Okay. It started. And it is memory pretty soon. Okay, 62 percent. That's a, I think it's in an average, not a total, right? It's an average uh, memory utilization. Yeah. Okay, 72 now. 72 is above the preset uh, threshold. Uh, let's see what happens. Here, uh, left hand side screen, if you do a sending note list, you see a new node being created. It all happened automatically. Why is that? Because um, the xenometer alarm was fired here. This is the, uh, if you show the alarm history of the xenometer alarm we created, is in alarm state there. So, after the new mini node created, 
why is that? We, when we uh, SH H into the uh, mini uh, cluster, we see, okay, we previously created two mini nodes, now we have a new one, and the internal IP address is 10.0.0.6, that is a new one. And we get um, ex external IP as well, and then we SH it into that new node and see if Spark load ex extended to that node as well. Okay, here we, we are. We are uh, in inside the, uh, the mini cluster, and we saw three nodes created one hour ago. That's the uh, the time we record the video. Then uh, one of the nodes was just created well about one, one minute ago. That's a new node. So that's that's the uh, demo, and uh, <laughs> so. We still have some time to for questions. The family for questions if you have any. Yeah. So, could you explain uh, in the uh, what auto scaled the application uh, containers? I understood that the Senlin's uh, policies uh, use the profile and policies together to scale out your uh, number of nodes, the number of minions, but what actually scaled the uh, Spark controller? Uh, that, yeah, okay. Uh, that's something we need to figure out. Uh, this is a pre uh, preliminary step towards the um, a holistic auto-scaling solution in the container space. Uh, we heard there are proposals uh, in the Kubernetes uh, community, they want to do their own auto-scaling. Right. If that thing lands uh, eventually, we need to consider that and incorporate that into the Magnum auto-scaler service. That's the long-term plan. But today we only show just one workflow. If you have workloads increased inside your container, the mini node underlying that can be scaled. That's the demo point. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Mm. Um, uh, so, if the, uh, I mean, if the utilization of the mini and node itself increases, right? The node itself increases. You say that you can scale at the bay level. So, is it possible to uh, use, use uh, have this use case in this particular thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the traditional auto scaling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it works. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah.